God in Jesus name. God loves you. He loves you. Means his concern. Whatsoever things are true, child of God, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of good report, think on those things. That's where your peace is. Don't think on the troubles. Think on the things of God. Think on the things that are true. You're born of the word of truth. Jesus is truth. You're born of him. You're renewed by him. You're not ordinary. What applies to the world doesn't apply to you. You are a born again believer. You are righteous, holy. You're more than a conqueror. You're an overcome. Ha ha ha. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, everybody. Welcome today to another wonderful Wednesday, Weekly Word here. I'm Jason, uh, and I'm going to be sharing with you a lovely word which I have from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So I hope you're ready there. Okay, you even if you watch this now live as it is a bit late here, it's after 9 where I am on the 2nd of November. Apologies for the delay, just had a bit of some internet uh, issues. But anyway, now here we are. And I'm up and running, and um, I'm just going to give you a lovely word. Amen. So, bless God. Today is a lovely day. Every day is a lovely day. And we thank Him because this is the day that He has made. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the word I'm going to share today, let me just put my phone down there. Okay, so the word which I'm going to share today is a lovely, awesome word which which I entitled Partner with God. Amen. So it's something which the Father was just sharing with me, you know, like I always say, or I often say rather, is that with myself I find the Lord often He speaks to me like when I'm sleeping. Not actually that I'll be asleep, but my spirit will be conscious. Whilst my body is at rest, but my spirit will be conscious. And I hear Him saying this. So He just spoke and He gave me this word. It was like in a matter of, uh, you can say in the natural, like two seconds. But in those two seconds, I got the entire message, which I'm going to share with you now. I, I don't even think I'll be able to put everything in, but I'll share with you um, exactly what he has, uh, what I can in this time. Amen. That's why we need eternity for these things. Amen. So praise God. I'm going to be sharing on partner with God. Okay. Thank you, Jesus, for everyone who will hear this word. I thank you that... Um, they will receive your word as it is on good ground. Thank you that their hearts are ready to receive. Thank you that my mouth is anointed to speak words of wisdom easily. And they will bring forth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Thank you, Lord God. Hundredfold harvest to everyone who will hear this word. They will put it to action. Amen. So this is what I'm going to be speaking on, right? Is partner with God. So what is it to partner with God? Okay, so if we look, let's just look at it even in terms of the business field. Okay, in business, what happens is that you can have a partnership, right? A partnership is different to a company. You know, uh, a company, you've got your shareholders and all this. But when we speak of a partnership, it's where the partners uh, come in an agreement. That's the, the, the business owners. They come together in an agreement and they agree on a business that they're going to run. You understand this? And, you know, like I always 
get back, when you get back down to like the different aspects which the Lord has put, you know, he's God the Father. So there's a certain like agreement between a father and a son, father and the children. You know, he's also our husband, like you get that. So there's a partnership there, even like in marriage. Marriage is almost just like how a business is. I'm not saying it's like on that part, but just hear me out. I'm saying marriage is like a business because marriage is like a business because the partners or the, the shareholders of that business have to be concerned about that business, have to be concerned about that uh, entity, that organization, that agreement. In this case, is marriage. So it's like a partnership with the two. That's why you, you find the husband will say, this is my partner, my wife, or the wife will say, this is my partner. Uh, my husband. Because why? Because they've come together in agreement for to accomplish something, isn't it? So it's no different when it comes to the kingdom of God. So what I'm saying to you is that make your life, of course, when you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, already the partnership has begun. You, you have been made his son. You have been married unto Christ. You know, you have accepted me, him as your king and as your shepherd. So there's a partnership automatically which happens. But now that is in the spirit. You now have to Act on that partnership. You get this. It's just like in a business. If there's partners, they sign an agreement, they start everything well. But if one partner now starts to deviate from the partnership agreement, then things won't flow so well in the business. It's just like in marriage. If one of the partners has to deviate from the marriage agreement, then things won't flow so well. So why I'm saying here, the word which the Lord has given me, which your father has given to give to you, is to say, partner with him. Amen. Partner with God. You get this. So how do you partner with God? It's where you give him your life in all that you do. You know, it's where there's nothing hidden from him. You just, you agree with him to say, okay, here's my life. You sit down, just like how you sit down with anyone else. Say, okay, I have these issues. You said you're my father. You said you're my king. I, I, I'm giving you, let's, let's do this together. You get this. This is even what the Lord says to you. He says, come, let's do this together. Come, let's work together. That's what he desires. That's what any normal father would desire um, with their son, hallelujah, praise the Lord, is that they work together with their son. That's why you find there's many businesses which are uh, father and sons. You get this, father and sons incorporated, so and so and sons. You get this. It's because there's something about that agreement, that partnership, isn't it? So let's get into scripture. Isaiah, just partner with your father. Partner with him. In, what do I mean partner with him? In everything that you do, you know. Put him, bring him right into the portal, bring him right into to the intimate thing, into the, the area. You know, the Lord is like, it's like uh, when you invite someone to your house or someone comes to your house and you say to them, oh, be at home or something. But maybe there's a certain room which no one should enter. <laughs> and then you find the visitor going to that place where maybe all the dirty laundry is put away or all the plates have been stashed secretly, the dirty plates in the pantry or whatever it is so the visitor doesn't see. And it's like Jesus, will, the Lord will go straight to that place <laughs> where it's like a mess, you see. What am I saying is that when you invite God in a place, he wants to get to the issue. He gets straight to the main thing which is a concern in your life. If it's your health, you know, as you, you say, Lord, okay, I'm opening up. This is what I'm dealing with. He gets straight to the, to the main thing which is concerning you. Whether if it's your health, whether if it's a marriage issue, whether if it's a financial issue, whether it's uh, some pain which you haven't yet uh, overcome from the past. You know, he goes right for that thing which is hurting you. He goes right for that thing which is a problem, which maybe you don't show to others, but he can see and say, okay, this is the thing. And when he comes to you and he comes to that thing, it's not like he's coming to point a finger to say, aha, I knew you were a criminal. I knew you've been doing this. I knew you've been hiding this secret sin or that. No, he doesn't do that. He comes and he says, okay, my son, my daughter, this is the issue which I see, the main thing. Let's bring it here. Let's deal with it, isn't it? And he helps you. Let's look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1, verse number 18. Look what it says here. He says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, which means like red, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. Praise God. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. That means that you will see the kingdom of God, 
being made manifest, being revealed in your life. You'll see the reality that you have an agreement with God. So here yeah, the Lord is saying to say, just come, let's talk together. If you have any issues, if you've done anything wrong, that's why even the book of Acts, what does it say? It says that um, to the people was preached the forgiveness of sins. Not for them to ask for forgiveness, but what was preached was the forgiveness of sins, meaning that they were what? Already forgiven. So likewise, you're already forgiven. When you come to, to God and you say, okay, I want to get into a partnership agreement with you. I want to, I want my life to be one with you. He's not going to like mark all your weaknesses and say, okay, let's start off with, you got an issue here, you need to stamp that out. You got another issue here, you need to stamp that out. You need to be regularly attending church. Otherwise, I can't work with you. No, God doesn't do like that. I'm not saying it's wrong to regularly attend church, but it's not like he's going to come and he's going to mark these things. He's going to say, okay, let's see where you are. I'm the, I am the potter, you are the clay. Let's work together. Allow me to shape you. Allow me to mold you. Allow me to direct you. He'll help you from wherever you are. I mean, I've seen God change people from like alcoholism, addiction, drug addiction, you know, from people who have been in really like way even... You know, like someone like an ex-convict like that, I've had ex-convicts who they've changed, they become preachers of the gospel. You see this, I've seen the Lord, even myself, He's changed me. If I look at myself back, even a few months back, I see a great change in my character that, that He has changed me. You see, so what I'm saying is when you come and you with the Lord and say, okay, go on, let's work together. I want, my life is yours, you know, in everything. Help me in my finances, help me in this thing. I want to do this project, whatever. Partner together with Him in your business. Put your finances in his hands, in his house. You get this and see the blessing that will come upon you. Because you've got a, a great partner. When you partner with the Lord in everything, in your health, in whatever, that's just trusting him. You will see great things. Like he says here, he says, just come now. Let's talk together. If you have any issues, I'll wipe them away. Any sins, any problems, come as you are. But as you come as you are, he's going to help you. He's going to clean all that up and perfect everything concerning you. Amen. You cannot clean yourself up and then come to God. Come to the Lord as you are. Say, here I am. Like the word of God in Psalms, I think 55, it says that the sacrifice that God wants from you is a broken heart, a broken and contrite spirit. Meaning he wants you just to be open with him. That's what he wants. He wants to be open with him. And when you invite him in, like I said to you, he's going to come to that thing which is really bothering you, which is really touching you. And he's going to help you and your life will be changed for the better. Let's have a look at uh, Jeremiah 29. I know I've been dwelling on this one for a bit, but it's awesome. Let's go there. Jeremiah 29, verse number 11. It says, For I know the thoughts, with the S, with a plural, not one thought, but many thoughts. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Hallelujah. You know, it's like when you watch a movie. Uh, then it finishes the end, you know, like when they would tell uh, fairy tales and that, or, you know, the cartoons, which I used to watch growing up, it would end with the storybook saying, and they lived happily ever after. Now, happily ever after for me sounds like eternity. So, you know, those story writers, I guess they were getting in touch with the gospel. So this is what the Lord has in mind for you. He has a happily ever after for your life. Not just like, okay, I'll help you here. Then when you face an issue, oh, you, it was your fault. No. He has a happily ever after in mind for you, regardless of whatever may have happened before. You see that? It says, I'll give you an expected end. It says, then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. Hallelujah. You see, this is the partnership agreement. This is what the Lord is saying to you. Saying, come, let's work together. What's the issue? What's the trouble? What's, your, what's on your heart? What's, what's your desire? Come, I help you. We work together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is what his desire is. He says, you will call upon me and I'll, you will go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. That means he'll listen unto you. You know, like uh, I think it's John G. Lake who said, if there is a Christian, let him pray. And if there's a God, let him answer. So this is what the Lord says. With you. He says, just come to me, uh, pray. You know, like he said in Luke uh, 18, he said, he desires, the Lord desires to answer you very speedily, very quickly. So you just trust in him. Come and work together with him. In your family, if your family, there's issues going on, come and just have that agreement with the Lord. If you have a child going astray, just sit down, like I'm saying to you like this. And remember, he's the almighty, ever-living, all-powerful God. You know, so you, this is the greatest partner you'll ever have. 
you'll ever have. You know, like there's many people they get like seed capital. You know, like when someone has a good business idea, you get some. They can apply to get funding and all this from some uh, NGOs or government or whatever it is to push their business. You know, say, oh, you have a wonderful idea. We're gonna back you up and we're gonna push this thing, and your business will prosper. And then that makes uh, that person's idea or whatever quite successful. But now, how about with the Lord? The Lord is more than just you know someone getting a tender, getting seed capital or something. He's the one who can bring and connect you with all those who give seed capital or whatever it is. Or he's the one who just can come in and truly bless you and truly change your life. Hallelujah. So he's the best partner and the only partner, in fact, that you should truly be concerned about. Amen. He's your source. Make him your source. I want us to look at, we're going to look at, um, thank you, Father. We're going to look at uh, two uh, Bible characters. We can say that Jacob and David. These are two guys who I saw they partnered with the Lord and amazing things happened. And amen. You know, you just make an agreement with the Lord. Say, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, help me with this thing. And he'll help you. And he, it's, a, it's a covenant. Partnership is like, an, like a covenant agreement. You decide to make that agreement with the Lord. He's already made an everlasting agreement with you. Isn't it? That your sins and iniquities you'll remember no more. He's not concerned about your wrong. So he's just waiting for you to come and say, okay, let's work together. Let's flow. So look at the Psalms 37. Mia Sotaya. Verse number four. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. And you shall dwell in the land. And verily you shall be fed. Remember he said in Isaiah, you shall be fed. So there's part of eating well. If you like food, you know what? When you partner with God, he's going to give you the food that you desire. Or, you know, every good thing. He says that he knows that you have need of these things. What the heathen chase after, you know, even those clothes you want. It's not like God is like, no, 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 you can't wear Gucci. You can't wear, uh, you know, you, you, you can't wear Prada. You can't have a Prada bag and all that. No, the Lord desires for his children to have all those best things. You get what I mean? At times we've overdone this thing of being content. But the word of God says godliness with contentment is great king. But it doesn't mean that the father doesn't want to bless you with all those material things. He'll give you those things. In fact, the word of God says that riches and honor come from the Lord. Isn't it? We see Solomon. When Solomon prayed and he, he sacrificed over a thousand burnt offerings to the Lord. And the Lord said, what do you want? And Solomon said, give me an understanding heart so I can judge your people and rule over them. And then the Lord said, because you've asked for that, I'm not only going to give you that, but I'm going to give you peace and I'm going to give you riches and I'm going to give you honor like no one will ever have before. So you can see that wealth, prosperity is a sign of someone who has partnered with, partnered with the Lord, who has got in agreement with God and he's blessed them. It's a sign of blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we don't shun those things. It says, delight, uh, Psalms 37, verse number four, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you. Okay, let's take it back from verse three. Trust in the Lord and do good and you shall dwell in the land and verily you shall be fit. Dwelling in the land, that's another one because that's inheritance and that's the promise of God. The promise is to give you land. So if you are a tenant, if you don't have property, realize that the Lord desires to give you land, not just a house, but even land itself, land which you can develop, land where you can farm, land where you can do what you want to do, where you own the land, not just renting something or the ability to pay rental on something, but to own the land. God is about giving you possession of owning the land. He says you'll dwell in the land and you'll be fed. That's what I was speaking on, all those material blessings. Verse number four, delight also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. So he knows what you desire. And he says, just come, let's enjoy it together, rejoice, have a good relationship. Yeah, and I'm going to give you what? The desires of your heart. Verse number five, commit your way unto the Lord, trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. You can continue reading the psalm, it's so awesome. So, Give your way to God. Give your life to Him. Give your plans to Him. Come and invite Him to be the CEO. You know, the true... Invite Him to be the one who helps you in all your decisions and this kind of thing. And see the blessing of God. See the prosperity. Amen. See the goodness. Now, I want us to look at a man whose life was changed from having nothing in his possession except for a stick. <laughs> you heard me right. Just a rod. He had nothing in his possession except for a stick. After he ran away from his brother, because his brother wanted to kill him. Let's have a look at this. Genesis 28. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Someone who partnered with God. I want to show you what happens when someone partners with God. The change that takes place. 
Hallelujah. The change that takes place. Yes, you already are partnered with him being born again, but you can actually consciously, you know, you've got your spirit, you've got your soul, and you've got your body. You, you, this is all three of you. Okay, yes, you're the spirit. That's where everything flows from. But the soul is the mind, which is what controls which, which your thoughts, emotions, and will, your intentions. So get in your soul. That's why Romans 12, 2 says, be renewed, isn't it? By the renewing, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, isn't it? Let's read it. So I don't misquote. Romans 12, let's go there. So we can make sense. Because it's not just like, okay, I gave my life to God, I prayed, so I'm born again, my spirit is there, so I'm already partnered with God. What more? What are you saying? What must I do? Romans 12 verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So what we want is the perfect will of God. You get this. So he's saying be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the renewing of your mind is where you continually agree your mind your thoughts your will your emotions agrees with the word of god isn't it then your body will also be transformed in that way so the spirit will feed your mind isn't it your spirit connects directly with god then your thoughts you begin to think like what the word says because when you meditate the word when you hear messages like this it feeds your spirit isn't it and then your soul grabs that as information isn't it now your soul has to agree with what the spirit word is saying what your spirit is here from the Holy Spirit. And when that happens, haha, thank you, Holy Spirit. I feel the power flowing right now. Flowing right now. It's changing you. Amen. It's changing you. I can feel the power spiritually and even in, in physically right now. I can feel it. And it changes your mind. And then it changes your circumstances, your whole life. The natural becomes affected. Remember, God spoke a word, and that word was released as words in the spirit. And then it changed everything which was natural. The same thing happened with who we're going to look at here, Jacob, right? Genesis uh, 28 verse number 20, because he received the blessing from his father, deceitfully, but by the mercy of God, it was maintained. That's what mercy does. You've got to read that book of mine, 40 Days on Mercy. Some awesome things on mercy, which a lot of people don't know about. But anyway, the mercy of God maintained the blessing because he's, he, he took the blessing deceitfully with the help of his mother. But those, that blessing was words released in the spirit. Just like how even now as I preach, I release words in the spirit to you. As you hear them, you receive them in the spirit and it will cause a change in your life. You'll see the change. Amen. It's just like when you plant a seed, you don't maybe see the tree straight away, but the seed is there. <laughs> and the water is there. And that plant will begin to grow. You might not see any tree growing up uh, when the seed is in the ground, but something's happening. Up until you begin to see it sprout, then you might start to say, oh, I see something's happening. What that guy was talking about, sir, there's a change in my life. Yeah, the seed is starting to, to sprout up now, isn't it? But it doesn't mean just because there's no sprout, the seed isn't there. The seed is there and it's going to sprout up. And then you begin to see more and more as that tree grows and grows and grows and branches and branches. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the fruit will be just bearing continuously like a tree which continually bears fruit. That's why Psalms 1 says that you are like a tree planted by the rivers of water. This is what happens when you partner with God. It's only upward and forward. Your life is only blessing continually. Even if they try and strike you down, the resurrection will be even greater. Praise God. So let's have a look at Jacob. Uh, Genesis 28, verse number 20. Now, this was when Jacob was running away after he stole his brother's blessing. Right? And Jacob vowed a vow. Okay, I'm fast forwarding from where he slept and he had the dream and all this. He had an encounter with God, basically. And then verse 20, something happened. Jacob vowed a vow. That means Jacob made a partnership. He, he got into partnership with the Lord. He vowed a vow saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat. Look at that. Food is there again, if you love food. Bread to eat and raiment to put on. That's clothing. He says, So that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you shall give me, I will surely give a tenth unto you. So those who don't want to tithe, there is tithing already. And Jacob said a tenth of all, you know what I mean? Not just money, a tenth of all. And it's not like the Lord came to him and said, I want a tenth of everything you have, Jacob, if you want me to bless you. No, Jacob just in his own said, God, if you can help me, I need to come back one day to my father's houses and he was running away from his family. He said, if you can be with me and all this, then I'll surely you'll be my God and I'll give you a tenth of everything you give unto me. He had nothing. 
That's why I always say, if you can't tithe 10 rand from 100 rand, or $10 from, or $1 from $10, you will not be able to tithe $100 from $10,000, or 1,000 rand from 10,000 rand, if you can't tithe the one. Because Jacob here, he had nothing, but he agreed that whatever he gets, he's going to give. So from when he started having that small, he began to give. Now I want to show you something. When Jacob came back, remember he found this power, okay, you can read the whole story if you want. Chapters 29, 30, 31, he had his uncle Laban who was making him like a slave, but God gave him wisdom because he had a partnership agreement with the Lord. And he took almost all more of the wealth of Laban than what Laban tried to swindle him out of. And he was blessed. Amen. The blessing was now showing. He was already blessed before, but the blessing was now showing in the natural. Now let's have a look at this. Genesis 32 from verse number 10. This was now when Jacob was returning and he was going back home after he had his wife and all this. And he was going back home and his brother Esau was coming. So he thought, I got to make peace with this guy. Esau, I stole his blessing. I hope he's not going to want to kill me. So let's see what happened. Genesis 32 verse number 10. He said, I am not worthy, speaking to the Lord. Okay, let's take it from verse 9. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said unto me, Return unto your country, to your kindred, and I will deal well with you. So he had a word from God to go back home. Verse number 10. He said, I am not worthy of the least of all your mercies and of all the truth which, the truth which you have showed unto your servant. For with my staff, I passed over this Jordan and now I have become two bands. That's like two armies. He says, I crossed over with my staff, with a stick. Remember I told you this guy started with a stick and then he got into partnership with God. And when he came back, he said he was two bands, meaning like two companies, two arms. You know what I mean? Like now the days they call them caravans. Like there in America, there's the caravans of all the South Americans going up to America. Thousands and thousands of people. So Jacob was a lot of people. He's... There was a lot of people and things which he obtained. Those days they didn't have cars, so he had donkeys and whatever. And those donkeys, you can, uh, you can just relate them to, you know, Mercedes Benzes and whatever of nowadays. Then camels, you can relate to trucks. He had lots of trucks, lots of lots of trucks, and lots of camels. You understand this? He was wealthy, so he says, "Deliver me." He said, "Now I've become two bands. Deliver me, I pray you, from the hand of my brother." From the end of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and smite me and the mother and children. And you said, I will surely do you good and make your seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. Isn't it? And then later on, he had another encounter with the, with the Lord. Up until his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. So the partnership was getting deeper and deeper. Then after that, he met his brother Esau. This was Genesis 33. Verse number three, and he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times and till he came near to his brother. And Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him. And they wept. Hallelujah. So Esau who was an angry guy, a man of the flesh. He made peace with his brother. Even though Jacob tried to give him gifts to bribe him, he was like, no, I don't need that. You know, the guy who loved food, the guy who sold his birthright for food. Now... His brother came and said, okay, I know this guy loves food. Let me send a whole lot of cows. They, maybe he can forgive me. But Esau was also so truly blessed of the Lord. And he was like, no, come, you're my brother. I'm happy to have you back. He didn't even think about saying you stole my birthright. That was the doing of God. So God, when you partner with him, he can even bring reconciliation to people who you have wronged. Amen. Reconciliation. He brings restoration in relationships and all that kind of thing. Even when you are in the wrong. Hallelujah. That's what he can do. Now, let's look at another person. I'm just going quickly uh, through these uh, two guys. Of course, we can go on and on about Jacob. That's where Israel, the name comes from, and Israel, the nation, and all that. Let's have a look at David. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. First Samuel 17, verse number 34. This was when David was just about to go up against Goliath. And then Saul was saying, Listen here, this guy is a man of war. What are you going to do against him? And David was, now was giving his CV, his credentials. You know, a lot of people think David was this small boy, yeah, skinny boy. No, David was not a small, skinny boy. Even uh, Saul's servant, when he said, I've seen the son of Jesse, a man of war. So David was young, inexperienced, but he was strong and he was a fighter. And the Bible also says he had, you know, like bow legs, bendy legs. And like freckles, when you get into the meaning of those words. So he was a bit of a funny, not a straight looking guy, but he was a tough guy. So anyway, let's see what happened with this 
David who partnered with the Lord. Right. He was a shepherd boy at this time, right? First Samuel 17 verse 34. And David said unto Saul, Can you imagine, how does a shepherd boy come and get an audience with the king? I'm sure when he was keeping the sheep, he made some agreements with the Lord. Eh? So let's go. First Samuel 17 verse 34. And David said unto Saul, Your servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Look at that. This wasn't a small skinny boy. He grabbed the lion by its beard and killed it and took the lamb out of its mouth. That's something else. If you've seen a lion in Africa, we've got lions, we've seen them. Lion is not an animal which you can just go and say, hello kitty and... <laughs> Just a normal cat or dog, if it's got some food, a bone, try and take a bone from a dog, it's something else. Now, this was a lion. So, this David was fearless, right? So, verse 36, he says, Your servant slew, killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Look at this, verse 37, this is the one I want to highlight. David said, Moreover, the Lord delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with you. So David came and said, The Lord was with me. I've had this agreement with him. I've had this partnership agreement with him. We took out the bear. We took out the lion. This Philistine is just going to be another one, another trophy in the cabinet. Hallelujah. Another head. <laughs> you know, if there was a taxidermy those days. And they did take the head of Goliath, isn't it? I think they put it in the town center, if I'm not mistaken. So he had another trophy to show. Something crazy. The guy's head was probably quite huge like this. <laughs> there, Goliath's head. But anyway, David triumphed from a shepherd boy. We know what happened later. He became the king. But I want to show you something where you can see how God can work with someone. When you partner with him, what he does. Look at David. Look at Jacob. From a staff became two companies. So it doesn't matter where you are or where you start from. Even if you are already saying you were already quite successful and big, still partner with the Lord and He'll even lift you even higher. Hallelujah. Because He wants to lift you higher and promote you. Okay, let's go here to uh, 2 Samuel 7. I take it from verse number 1. Thank you, Jesus. This was now David when he was now the king and he was, you know, he was living it up, if we can say that. Uh, right, 2 Samuel 7 verse 1. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies. So David had stopped fighting. Now it seems there was peace. David was always in war, but it seems now he was at peace. It says that the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See, now I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells within curtains. And Nathan said unto the king, Go do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Shall you build me a house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel. Now the children of Israel, that's Jacob's children. Remember we started with Jacob. Out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build you? Why build me not a house of cedar? Hallelujah. So look what happened here. David reached a point where he was like, I'm living in a wonderful palace here. And the ark of God, which represented the presence of God, was just like in a tent, you know, behind curtains. So he felt in his heart. Remember, the Lord said, I found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. So his agreement with God was so deep. And it's like, he was now like saying, how can I be living in this wonderful place? And the presence of God is living in a place which is not costly. That's when he decided, he put it in his heart and he wanted to build a house for God, isn't it? And look, God spoke to the prophet. He spoke to the prophet Nathan and he said, I never ever asked for a house to be built for me. You see, you're saying, why does David want, why even build me a house, a glorious house? I never even asked for a house to be built for me. But then he said something. Look what the Lord said. 2 Samuel 7 verse 8. He said, Now therefore, so shall you say unto my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the sheep coat, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies out of your sight, and have made you a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Look at this. So God is showing, he's, he's now saying to David, 
I took you from, you know, from from just that raggedy boy, the sheep boy, you know. In in the valley of Zulu, we say Mfana Wembozi. You see, you see the someone who was just looking after the goats, the dirty like person out there. The one despised. Even his father didn't even consider him to be one when the prophet Samuel came and said, the Lord has said, I must anoint your son to be king. He wasn't even among the ones who the father thought could be the next king, but he became the one. So the Lord was saying, look, I took you from humble beginnings, made you rule over my people. He said, I was with you, whatever, wherever you went through, and you've defeated all your enemies. Verse 10, he says, Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all your enemies, also the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. Look at this. David said to the Lord, I want to build you a house. And the Lord doesn't come and say to David, okay, yes, yes, build me a house. It shows that God is a giver. You can never outgive him. That's why I say partner with the Lord. Even in your giving, in your offerings or whatever, towards the church, towards the gospel, you can't outgive God. When you say, I want to do something like this for the Lord, the Lord will say, okay, he'll receive it. But then he'll be like, I want to do something for you. He wants to show you that he is good. Look at this. David wanted to build God a house. And then the Lord says, I will build a house for you. He starts to speak about his people. When the king is saying, I want to bless you, I want to build your house. Then the Lord says, I'm going to give your people a good land. Remember when we started Psalm 37, said you will dwell in the land and you'll be fed. The same thing here, the Lord says, I'm going to give my people a lovely place to stay because of what the king had said. Isn't it? And he said, also the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. The Lord says he'll build you a house. So anything when you decide to do something for God, he's going to make something even bigger for you. Verse number 12, 2 Samuel 7, 12. He says, And when your days be fulfilled and you shall sleep with your father, he's speaking to David, I will set up your seed, I will set up your seed after you, which shall proceed out of your bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod. Like Hebrews says, that no... If you are a child of God, he corrects you. So this is what he was promising here. Correction. To say, I'll be a real father. With the rod. And with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Thy throne shall be established forever. Look at that. This is the word which the Lord gave to David. Because David just had a design in his heart to build a house, a house for the Lord. For the presence of God. They had the Ten Commandments, the Ark of the Covenant. And just because of that desire. So when you partner with God, you'll be like, hey, I want to bless God. That's why I always tell people, you never lose when you give to God. When you give your money or whatever to God, when you sacrifice or commit to do something for Him, you don't lose because He sees it and He's saying, this is a partnership. This is a covenant. This is an agreement. I must be faithful to my word. Like Jacob said, Jacob said, Lord, you said that you will bless me and return me to my father's house. So when Jacob got back, he had the confidence. He was afraid that Esau might want to kill him, but he had the confidence that no, Lord, you said this. So I'm going in faith. He understands this. I'm going to make peace. I stole all this. He thought, hey, I've got all this stuff. Maybe he's suffering there. He's going to find a skinny guy or something. But he found Esau is uh, coming with 400 men. When his messenger said, your brother's coming with 400 men. He thought, oh, he's come with the army to kill me. He's hired some people to come and settle this war. But no, that was how blessed he was as well. Hallelujah. Praise God. So this is what the Lord's going to do for you. When you partner with him and you decide to say, I'm giving my life to you, I'm working with you, watch how he's going to work with you. Watch how he's going to lift you up. Watch how he's going to lift up your name. And we saw it, that the name, the, the, the lineage of uh, royalty, of the kingship, of the rulership, never left from, uh, from David's uh, family line. Hallelujah. Even though the wickedness the others did, they still remained hid. Hallelujah. Until it reached up to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's close with one scripture. Praise God. Just to show you. Uh, partnering with God. Give him your life. Give him your all. Sit down with the Lord. He's not a hard person. When you call to him. Pray unto him. He meets you where you are. He relates with you on your level. He's, this is how the Holy Spirit is. He relates with you on whatever level. That's why even I said with the books which I wrote. Even if it's someone is a newly born again Christian, 
there will be milk for them. But someone more mature, I tell you, I've put some meaty bones there. Some meat which the person will eat. So it's the same with the Lord. He deals with someone, whether it's a, whatever issue they have. He deals with each person on the level. That's why even in giving, he just said, just give a tenth of what you have. It shows that he works in proportion. Amen. So let's go to Philippians uh, chapter 2. Thank you, Father. Let's take it from verse number 13. He says, For it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So all the desires that you have, God is the one who's given you those desires. He's the one who's working with you. He's the one who's partnering with you, who wants you to just to see a blessed life. You know, you can partner with some investor or whatever and all this kind of thing to try and multiply your money and all that. But partner with the Lord and he'll show you which investor to even partner with. You get this? Partner with the Lord. He'll show you who to marry and all this kind of thing. He'll help you, he'll direct you, he'll guide you, he'll lead you because he wants you to be happy. Remember, the main thing, he's giving you the story which ends happily ever after. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is the word I had for you and I believe you are blessed by it. Uh, just, just make an agreement with the Lord. Have your own personal agreement. Yes, you already are saved, but just let your life, pour your life out to him. Daily, just he's your partner. Partner with him. Make a deal. And he doesn't break a deal. He doesn't break an agreement. Even if you have to break the agreement, he still comes back and he's, and he's waiting for you. Hallelujah. But he'll help you that you won't break the agreement. Amen. He's not a hard man. He's a loving father. Amen. So this is the word for you. I love you so much. And like I always say, the father, he loves you even more. Hallelujah. So have a blessed and lovely week ahead. Like, follow, subscribe, everything. You can contact me in the details to follow. Amen. Thanks. Thank you for, Thank listening. You for listening. Thank you, Thank for, you watching. for watching. Remember, Remember to, like, to like, follow, follow subscribe, subscribe and share, share this word, and share this message. message. If you're, if you're not, not sure about your salvation, salvation, you're not sure if you're, you're saved, saved, say the prayer, say to, the follow. prayer to follow. The greatest the miracle, greatest miracle is, is salvation. salvation. Up your hands to your hands to him. 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 Today, today, I've heard your word, and I believe, and I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe, that you mean that you are the Son of God. That you died for me, that you rose from the dead. I believe, I believe that you are the Son of God. That you died for me, that you rose from the dead. I believe, I believe that you mean that you died for me, that you rose from the dead. I believe, I believe that you mean that you died for me, that you rose from the dead. I believe, I believe that you mean that you died for me, that you rose from the dead. I believe, I believe that you mean that you died for me, that you rose from the dead. I believe, I believe that you mean that you died for me, that you rose from the dead. I believe, I believe that you mean that you died for me, that you rose from the dead. I believe, I believe that you mean that you died for me, that you rose from the dead. I believe, I believe that you mean that you